For this video, I'm going to be going over eight different aquarium products that I use on a regular basis and that I personally feel are well worth the money that I paid for them. The first one is a tap water conditioner product and it doesn't have to be the API brand. Just here in England, it's a lot easier to get API than the other popular brands. The main use case for these products is to remove the chlorine, chloramines and heavy metals in tap water to make it safe and minimise any potential problems with your fish, plants or invertebrates. Depending on your water source, you may not actually need one of these, but here in the UK, the majority of people should be using it as the main disinfectant method for city water supplies is chlorine or chloramines. It's usually only around £10 per bottle, and I've had this one as long as I can remember. You really only dose small amounts of it, so it does last a long period of time. Next up, we have a chemical-based water test kit, and again, it doesn't have to be the API brand. Now, the price tag is around £30, so it is far more expensive than the little test strips that you can get on the market, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth the money. It might seem a little intimidating if you are a beginner but these are so easy to use. They come with a full user guide to keep things simple but you basically fill the test tube to the water line and then you add the required test and solution in the required doses. Then over the course of a couple of minutes a test solution will change colour depending on the water parameters in your tank and then you compare it to the colour sheet. One potential downside is that at times it may be a little difficult to compare the colour of the test solution to the colour sheet. Next up we have Fluval Bug Bites and for the fish I keep, I really do think that their granule formula is the best dry fish food option on the market. The prices for these do seem to fluctuate widely depending on where you purchase it and I've always found the cheapest option just to be Amazon. I do have a range of different fish split between all of my different tanks and they will all happily and consistently eat bug bite granules and I really do think that that consistently point is underrated because some of my fish will eat a new fish food for a week or two then they go off it and just never touch it again. But with bug bites they keep coming back and coming back and happily eat eating it. Now I'm not 100% sure about this but I really do think that's because the primary ingredient in these is black soldier fly larvae and some other popular foods on the market use wheat or another plant based product. In addition to my fish my amano shrimp like to come over and steal bug bites as well and if there are any bug bites left after the feeding frenzy then some of my neo caridina shrimp sometimes come down and feed on them too. I know I've mentioned this in other videos but just to say it in this video I've never had luck with their flake based food. My fish just kind of stare at it and swim off. There are different formulas and slightly different granule sizes available within this range. I've personally tried the tropical smaller granule size one and that's definitely been a big hit. But I've also got the bottom feeder formula that my Corydoras and Honey Garami seem to enjoy as well. I know I've mentioned this in a few other videos as well but I like to put these into a cheap pepper grinder that costs $2 and crush them up so my nano fish like my chili rasboras can enjoy them as well. Next up we have a decent water siphon and I use my water siphon multiple times per week be it for water changes, tank cleaning or just water top ups due to evaporation. Now there are several different price points on the market for water siphons and I thought they'd all be the same but I couldn't have been more wrong. These days I just skip over the cheapest £5 ones which is probably about $7, they're just not worth the money in my opinion they break very easily. The current siphon I use costs around £18 and in the grand scheme of things that's really not that much considering how often I use this. This particular one does come with a bunch of different accessories but in all honesty I've never used any of them other than the water diffuser one to make sure that the water pressure isn't too bad when I'm refilling the tank. One of the main reasons I like this is that this particular siphon has a hand pump to start the actual water flow so there's no risk of getting the water into my mouth which I've seen some other people complain about with other siphons. The next one on are plastic quarantine bins and I actually got this tip from Irene over on the Girl Talks Fish channel but these are a great investment especially here in Europe because we pay so much more for our aquariums than people in North America so these are a cheap quick and easy way to set up quarantine tanks for new or sick fish. As you can see in this clip I currently have a quarantine tank set up for my three new Corydoras. I do keep them substrate free just because some types of parasite need substrate to reproduce in them. Although technically the plants are optional I do like to add some plastic plants in a small cave to the quarantine tank just to try and keep stress levels as low as possible. When it comes to heating these I just add a cheap heater off Amazon that costs around $10 and I've never had any problems with water temperature and when it comes to the nitrogen cycle I just move the spare sponge heater from my guppy tank. So the next product is the All Pond Solutions HOB 500 and that's what it's branded as here in Europe. Over in North America I believe this is under the Sun Sun brand but the actual product is exactly the same. Unlike a normal 
normal hang on the back filter that has a limited storage capacity for sponge or filter media. The HOB 500 is basically a hang on the back canister filter. It comes with plenty of different trays to ensure you can quickly and easily fit it out with enough mechanical, biological or chemical filtration as possible and it will work with most popular tank sizes. I currently use this filter on my 29 gallon community tank and on my 12 gallon guppy tank and so far I've been really impressed with its performance. I will link to a video from Pond Guru in this video's description where he goes over how he pimps the filter out but it's based on using the top compartment and the first tray for mechanical filtration with coarse, medium and fine filter pads. And then the rest of the trays are used for biological filtration with bio gravel. I don't currently use chemical filtration in my tanks. So the next product is frozen Daphnia and I've tried several popular frozen foods with my fish and in my opinion and in my experience frozen Daphnia are definitely the best all round option. That said my better fish and Corydoras do seem to prefer bloodworm but both will still eat frozen Daphnia without issue if I put them in the tank. I think the main advantage of frozen Daphnia is their size as they really do hit the sweet spot because they are larger than the frozen Cyclops so my larger fish will eat them but they're smaller than the frozen brine shrimp so my smaller fish will eat them. I basically take one of the cups that Tropica ship their Java Moss in, add some warm water to it, put the little cube in there and just let it defrost and then I'll serve it using a pipette. So the final product is a liquid fertiliser and this will not be needed if you're not keeping live plants in your aquarium. My 29 gallon community tank consists of various types of epiphyte plants, Java Moss and Amazon Frogbit as its floating plant of choice so they all feed from the tank's water column. When I was researching this tank I did see a lot of people recommend the use of a liquid fertiliser in the tank just to make sure that the plants are getting all of the macro and micronutrients. Like I mentioned earlier the API brand is readily available in pretty much every shop here in the UK so I went with the API version at first. I really didn't notice much difference with my plants. Then one of my friends recommended that I try the Tropica liquid fertilizer range and I switched over and within a week or two I was easily able to see the difference in growth rate in my Java Moss and my Amazon frog bit. My Amazon frog bit has actually grown at such a rapid pace right now that I have to trim the roots and remove the tiny little baby frog bits twice a week or it just takes over the tank. I know that there are liquid fertilizers on the market that aren't nutritionally complete for your plants but in reality any brand or any product that is nutritionally complete and contains all of the macro and micronutrients your plants need should be fine for your tank.